What if we threw our bathroom scale away and completely relied on what our body intuitively told us instead? I'm joined today by an inspirational woman who saw that the dieting roller coaster was broken and that she wanted off. How does true love, self love, impact our bodies? You're about to find out. Join me for Andrea's story. This is the highway to healing. All right, Andrea, thank you so much for being on today's episode. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. It's going to be an interesting conversation. It's a topic that I have often thought about throughout my lifetime, um, which is dieting and the roller coaster and also how weight, weight loss and self-worth confidence kind of all play in together. Um, I'm going to have you tell us your story here in a moment. I think it's so important to have you on the show because most of my listeners uh, are women. I I do have some men in there and I'm sure they'll relate to the topic as well. Um, But there's so many of us who think about our bodies and, oh, I wish that, you know, I I just heard a woman the other day say, gosh, I wish my, my thighs were smaller. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Like own it, love it. Right. Yeah. And I think the dialogue around our bodies and the importance of, of that inner voice is critical. And so I'm thrilled to have you here. So why don't you, Andrea, take us to what you mean by dieting made you a monster. Tell us your story. Yes. Okay. So I had this kind of crazy transformational experience of where I actually turned into a into a monster, my poor husband, (laughs) but I feel like I need to back up a few steps because context is always great. I feel like I always understand the story more when I know the backstory. And what happened was I had grown up in a really healthy home. By default, I made healthy decisions without even realizing it. And as I grew up, I had these habits that served me well. And again, I didn't even know that they were healthy. I thought everyone just did it. But when I left my home, I lived overseas for a while. I got married. And then all of a sudden, I just decided to jump off the healthy train, apparently, because I was on my own and making my own decisions. And a really interesting experience happened where I I had gained 30 pounds and a stress bomb was kind of thrown into our marriage. And so my focus was not on myself anymore. It was on our family unit. And because I wasn't focusing on myself and because I wasn't doing the work that I needed to do to progress, my self-worth, my confidence was at an all-time low and I was making extremely unhealthy decisions. And I went through this really interesting journey from that point of trying to get back to feeling like myself. That's what I wanted the most was to look and feel like myself. And I learned a lot of lessons along the way, but one of the most pivotal was this moment where I I became someone that I didn't even know who I was. What happened was I joined a weight loss contest at my job. I work in IT. That's one of my jobs. And there's an amazing group of older men and they invited me to do it. And I thought, okay, why not? And so I did this low carb contest. The rules were 30 grams a day of carbs. I didn't know what that meant at the time, but pretty much I was agreeing to eat one the equivalent of one slice of bread a day in carbs. So I had to cut out all of my favorite foods, mac and cheese, brownies, pasta, bread, literally everything. Like I couldn't eat any of it. And I started losing weight though. I thought, oh, maybe this is how you do it. Because I had tried so many different things, diets, workouts, cooking, and nothing was working. And it was so frustrating. But two weeks after I started this low carb contest is when this pivotal moment happened. I woke up on a Sunday and I did not feel like myself. Physically, I was weak. Mentally, I felt checked out. Emotionally, I was all over the place. I was stressed. I felt hungry, angry, tired, and short. And my amazing husband, he noticed, obviously, because I wasn't my normal Andrea self. And he asked, hey, what's going on? And at first I kind of brushed him off, 
And I said, I don't know, I don't know, like, I'm fine. And you know how <laughs> sometimes we do. And he said, no, no, what's going on? How's the health competition going on at work? I think he kind of knew something was wrong. And I said, well, I've lost almost 15 pounds in two weeks. And he goes, wait, you what? And his eyes got super big. And in that moment, I knew that this was not the way to do this. I was turning into a monster, someone that I wasn't. I was frustrated, angry, tired, alone. I felt awful. And I knew that this was not sustainable. The second I started eating my favorite foods again, which I knew I would, competitions and diets end, I knew that it wasn't worth it. And so that was that pivotal moment where I realized, okay, there has to be another way. Yeah. Okay. So now you've got me hooked on a story. So you go through this weight loss competition, you become this monster, you start eating regular foods again. So how did you get to where you're at right now then? Yeah, that's such a good question. So many people think you have to start with what you do and you do different actions. Like you have to do the cooking or the eating or the, the, the nutrition and the workouts. But what happens is if you're just worrying about what you do, you spin around in circles and you don't get anywhere. You have to start with what you're thinking and who you're being first, which is a huge shift. Not a lot of people talk about this, but once you realize how your thoughts are affecting what you do and your actions, if you work on those thoughts, that's when your life changes. So that's the route that I went down and it was awesome. It was so exciting and things that I just wasn't hearing anywhere else. Yeah. So walk us through maybe a few of those examples. So for people that are listening right now, if they're like, wait a second, Andrea just said, if I think differently, then I don't have to diet anymore. What do you mean by all of that? Like, where could people start? Like what's an easy low hanging fruit that they can grab a hold of? Yes. And it's different for everyone because people struggle with different things. The first thought that I felt like I needed to work on because This one thought was changing how I was acting. It was affecting everything that I did. And I didn't realize it. The one thought that I had was, if I lose weight, then I will love myself more. And this was so deeply ingrained for months and years that I thought if I lost the 30 pounds, then I would be happy. And this is really typical for a lot of people. And once I detached my value and my worth from the number on the scale, actually did that, not just say, oh, I love myself, that you can't do that. If you have a really deep negative thought in your brain, you can't just switch to, oh my gosh, I love myself. Like that's not going to happen. There are actual steps you can take to do that. But once I started that journey with that single thought, I was able to become the woman that I wanted to be and think the thoughts that created those different actions in my life that made me lose the weight, made me become the most confident person that I've been in my entire life. Right. It's not about, like you said, just saying, oh yeah, I love myself. You know, it's not going to (laughs) work. It doesn't work. (laughs) You actually have to love all of you for everything that you are, the shape that you are, where you carry weight, where you don't carry weight. Um, you're right. I I feel that thoughts are frequency. And if you can align yourself with really positive, beautiful affirmations and believe them about yourself, your body will start to change and shift. And uh, I know Dr. Joe Dispenza has written books about health and and the, the power of your brain and kind of taking yourself through a series of thoughts that actually starts to rewire the way that your body works. So I believe in this, there's power in in what we believe. It's not just about simple words that we're saying to ourselves. So I love that. That's, that's important. Um, You mentioned mindset and listening to your body and how critical that is. Do you even like, is there a ritual or a statement that you say to yourself? Um, Is there a practical kind of tip or a place that people could start to do this? Yeah. What I love about this concept of listening to your body is 
it's so different for everyone. That's why dieting doesn't work. They're saying this is a one size fits all program. And that's just not the case that it doesn't exist. And so this idea of being able to listen to your body, it's that every single person knows what's best for them. We just don't know how to access that. So for some affirmations or some thoughts or just the mindset around that, some of the things that you can do is come up with a phrase in your mind that builds trust in your own ability. So many times we try to outsource or we try to put things on external factors, but what we really want to do is not put the blame on anything else, but to think about ourselves and say something like, I trust myself to know what's right. Because it's so true. Your body will tell you what it wants to do and what it doesn't. But sometimes we're just so out of tune with what's happening because our lives are crazy and stressed and we feel like we don't have a lot of time. We really do have a lot of time and we don't have to be stressed, but we're so stuck in that mindset that it can be hard to know that, yes, my body will actually tell me what it wants to do and I can lose weight and have self-confidence at the same time. So let's talk about that concept of listening to your body a bit more to give the listeners an idea. So is it that day in, day out, you are literally listening to what your body wants to eat and if it wants to move, if it wants to work out, like break down what that means to you? Yeah, that's such a good question. I haven't been asked that before. I love that. (laughs) I feel like it's two parts. There's the day-to-day listening to your body of, am I hungry? Am I not hungry? What does my body want? What does it not want? But I feel like listening to your body is also on a broader level. It's putting that trust in ourselves and knowing what is affecting us externally. What inputs are we getting? I mean, I told you I'm in IT. I have the computer brain. What inputs are we receiving? And then what output are we choosing? We only have one output. That's what we think and that's what we do. So listening to your body is recognizing all of the things going on in our life. It's internalizing some, not internalizing others, and then choosing by listening to your body, which one do you actually want to follow? Yeah. I've heard people say, uh, you know, I can't remember who exactly at the top of my head, but there have been people that have talked about, you know, you could hold food and ask your body, like, do you want this? And your body intuitively will tell you yes or no. And you can do muscle testing, which is uh, using your body as a pendulum and holding a food and seeing which way your body moves. And uh, it'll give you the answer it's fascinating how the mind and the energy and the body all work together. Uh, It's quite remarkable. Um, But you did touch on earlier the importance of confidence and of self-worth and how they're all interconnected. Uh, And I know you have an amazing uh, Facebook group, which I'll mention in the closing. But before we let you go today, is there anything that you want to share with listeners or any any kind of final thoughts or inspiration? Yes. So many times you think that you're, you should be somewhere else in your life. You should be farther along in your journey. You think you should look like this or talk like this, but that's your brain telling you a lie. You're exactly where you need to be in your journey right now. And you're continually progressing. You don't have to think that you are not where you're supposed to be because That's debilitating. Nobody wants to think that, but you're exactly where you should be right now and just keep moving forward. What a great reminder for all of us. You know, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. It's perfect how it is. And you are perfect the way that you are. So start loving yourself in that manner. Yes. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Andrea, for joining us today. Thank you. This was amazing. I really appreciate it. For more information on Andrea's work, join her Facebook group, Healthy Confident Women. The link is in our show notes. Stories like this one are important to tell. It reminds us that even during the darkest times, we can always find light. We can always choose faith over fear. For exclusive content, please join my Spark Plug members only community 
and apply to be a guest on this show. Find out more at spiritandspark.com.